It's a new year and a new look for Norwegian Joy. This ship just received a makeover. We're gonna take you aboard and tell you all about the expanded Vibe Beach Club, the new enhancements at the Thermal Suite, and what's new in the Haven. Let's go check it out. Early in 2024, this Breakaway Plus class vessel completed a three-week dry dock, and we were blown away by the changes. It really feels like Norwegian listened to guest feedback and amped up the spaces people love. As we go through the refurbishments, I'll share some tips and tricks we picked up on our recent Joy Cruise. Be sure to stay to the end to find out our thoughts on the number one question we got about the refurbishment on Joy. By the way, I'm Sherry with Cruise Tips TV. It is wonderful to meet you. We invite you to subscribe and follow us on social media by searching Cruise Tips TV just about everywhere. Now let's start with a look at the all new thermal suite. Seriously, this has to be my favorite glow up on board. The adults-only thermal suite on Joy is now the largest in the fleet, and you're going to want to spend lots of time here. So grab a pass early in your cruise. When you walk into the spa and thermal suite, it feels light and bright, but also elegant. The staff here are super friendly and always willing to answer your questions about treatments. Even the locker rooms are gorgeous here, with well-lit, individual vanities, and plenty of lockers, as well as changing areas and accessible shower facilities. The decor is super modern and feels peaceful right when you walk in, and the location on the ship is ideal for bringing in just tons of natural light. All right, here's where it gets really good. This large separate lounge area has three times as many of the popular hot tile loungers compared to other NCL ships. Perfect for quiet downtime on a sea day or after a busy day in port. One thing I loved were the thoughtful pillows on the loungers to support your neck, as well as little side tables where you can put a glass of water while you rest. The views up here are breathtaking, and this is a great spot to retreat when the weather isn't so good outside. If you're not into the tile loungers, there's couch style seating here in the thermal suite as well. Okay, we have to talk about these space-like pods. No, they're not human cloning devices or part of the set from an X-Files episode, even though they look like it. These are the Four Senses loungers. At first, I didn't understand what they were, so I read the description and braved it. All you have to do is lie down, close your eyes, and relax. The loungers are warm and soft and give off an aroma that sends you into total relaxation. If you're the meditating type, you're never going to want to leave these loungers. Now you can also enjoy all the classics here. The thermal suite has a sauna, an ice room, and an aromatic steam room. There's even a salt room. There's also a haptic foot therapy walk which massages your feet as you walk across it and a whole wall of sensory showers. Now the rainfall ritual showers have three different temperatures and shower experiences called calm, temperate, and invigorating. There's a hot tub in here too with nice views of the thermal suite area and just adjacent and up the stairs from the hot tub, you'll find a cold plunge pool. The cold plunge pools kept at about 52 degrees and it was all the rage on our cruise. It was great to see people taking advantage of the alternating hot and cold therapies here in the spa. And if you're not sure how all of this works, the spa staff will help you out anytime. Oh, and on our sailing, the spa hours were about 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So there's lots of time for you to enjoy this space if you decide to buy a pass. If you're wondering where all of this space came from, the all-new Thermal Suite replaced the Galaxy Pavilion, the ship's former virtual reality complex. You might remember it. If you're not sure you want a Thermal Suite pass, here is a tip for you. On day one of your cruise, the first day, boarding day, the Mandara Spa offers free tours so you can check it out for yourself and decide if you want to buy a pass for the whole cruise. Also new to this area, Joy now has an IV drip station. When we were on Joy, it wasn't advertised much, and I wonder if people even really knew it was available. We gave this a try on the last day of our cruise, and the nurse helped us to choose an IV that was best for each of us. 
The IV delivers nutrients quickly to your body and you can customize it based on whatever your needs are. For example, my husband and I both got a hydration treatment, but my husband added a nutrient that helps him out with improving his sleep. Now, the therapist will ask you a few basic questions before your treatment to help you pick out what you need, and it's a really easy process. They'll customize it for you, so don't worry. Takes about an hour for the infusion, and you get to enjoy beautiful ocean views while you have your IV. Our treatment was about $199 per person plus a service charge on top of that. All right, ready to get your vibe on? <laughs> NCL expanded the adult-only Vibe Beach Club up on Deck 20 to include more seating and additional private cabanas. The expanded Beach Club takes over the former Laser Tag Arena, and the layout is now similar to the Vibe Beach Club that you'll find on Norwegian Encore and Norwegian Bliss. The new private cabanas are really nice, and there seems to be endless seating up here. This is a great spot for sun worshipers, and the staff is warm and friendly and super excited to make your time at Vibe feel special. My favorite spots were the bar and, of course, the hot tubs. Now, the bar menu up here is unique, but they can pretty much make anything that you want. The hot tubs are in prime locations with killer views, worth the pass alone, in my opinion. Now let's talk about what changed in the Haven. We didn't stay in the Haven on our cruise, but we got a chance to visit on turnaround day and the changes are really nice. Well, the whole Haven area is really nice, but that goes without saying. So here's what they did. The Haven Premier Owner Suites with a large balcony, that's the category of stateroom, have now been expanded to three bedrooms. There's two of these types of suites on board and during the refurbishment, they modified them to include three bedrooms, and three and a half bathrooms per stateroom. It's a fully renovated living room as well, and a master bedroom. So much space here. They also have a new separate dining room in these suites that overlooks the forward-facing Haven Horizon Lounge. Now, if you're not familiar with the Haven, it's NCL's exclusive ship within a ship complex. Guests have key card access to the Haven area where they enjoy spacious suites and dedicated experiences and service. There's a concierge, a private pool area, and a private restaurant and bar. It's really, really nice if you can spring for it. Finally, we promised we'd share our honest opinion on the number one question about this refurbishment. The main thing people ask about is the changes to the observation lounge. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Norwegian repurposed a portion of the observation lounge to create 24 new balcony staterooms. Now, when we first heard about this, we wondered if the new staterooms would kind of cut into one of our favorite spots on Joy and make the observation lounge feel cramped or crowded. Well, the truth is we hardly even noticed the change. And all of the guests that we talked to on board, they said the same thing. The observation lounge is really big. And during our fully booked spring break sailing, it just never got very crowded up here. The observation lounge is still a hidden gem on Joy. And on our sailing, a lot of cruisers didn't even figure out this place was here until a few days into the cruise. With lots of cozy seating, snacks throughout the day, and a full bar, the observation lounge still sets joy apart and the views are a showstopper. Back to those snacks for a minute. Here at the observation lounge at breakfast time, there was always coffee, pastries, yogurt, and cereals to choose from. And during the afternoon hours, the light bites rotated, but you could usually find things like quiche, little sandwiches, and a variety of sweets and breads. Again, a lot of people didn't even know about the Observation Lounge, especially earlier in the cruise. And it's an awesome place to grab a snack or a light meal. Of course, the Starbucks up here is super convenient too, especially if your cabin is located on the upper decks. On our sailing, the Starbucks hours were about 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. most days, and the shaken oat milk lattes were delicious. There's no shortage of space up here, and it's one of our most loved features on this class of ship. Now, we didn't get to peek into the new staterooms on the other side of the observation lounge because the ship was full, but one guest I talked to who was staying in one of the rooms said they're basically identical to the other balconies on the ship. 
Okay, friends, we're going to link to lots of other resources you can check out if you're sailing on joy, and you'll find those in the description and comments to help you get the most of this beautiful ship. So what did you think of the enhancements? If you're cruising on Norwegian Joy, we want to hear from you. Drop us a comment and let us know all about your cruise and also let us know what is your favorite spot on Norwegian Joy. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas.